Let's listen in as Ed visits with Edward Tangle, founder and chairman of the board of Intercon Engineering. Ed, Intercon, uh, the name Intercon, what is that uh, symbolic well, I think of? It came from a group of people, what we want to call our company, it's shorting for energy controls. So N-E-N-E-R-C-O-N, it's part of energy, and E-N-E-R, and then control, C-O-N, and we shortened it to Enercon. That's where it came about. Who came up with that? One of our uh, engineers, I can't remember his name offhand, was sitting and doodling one time and came up with this idea. It wasn't my idea, but it was his who came into play. Why don't we call it Enercon, huh? So did. you didn't in, you know, go ahead and employ a, a New York... No, 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 no. It was just at a coffee table in the office at a, uh, our little conference area, and it was just dreamed up. No. Now, this company, it's a global leader in power generation. Well, actually, what we do, we put systems together. We service other people's product. We take other people's product, put it into an operating mechanism that provides power generated power out to the industry, yes. In that now, I was thinking a way for me to understand okay. would be there's the emergency standby, and there would be a prime power, and Correct. then there would be parallel. In other words, you're working parallel with the utility, and you're backing up in case of a failure, and you're, you're the primary source. Is that is that Well, uh, in, in the standby power, we sit back and we come online. Our, our control system will put a generate into operation if utility should pay it fail. In prime power, we'll take one, two, three, four. I think we've gone up to about 10 units operating in parallel, put it into the network. And we'll also take those units in parallel with utility. When we parallel with utility, we put them in a base load mode. In other words, we put out a fixed number of kilowatts and the load swings are handled by the utility and we're on there to provide whatever power the complex would need. And maybe we'd be input 100 kW from the, from the utility company and three megawatts comes from our system into the complex. Well, I, I understand kind of what you suggested and not having an engineering background. You don't need an engineering <laughs> background. You, <laughs> know. you need logic in what you're trying to accomplish. Putting it another way, you deal with electricity yes, and sir. power. Yes. And you control the power to suit the needs of the subject. Right. The systems will control, it will put more power into a network as loads increase and then drop Le generates the power off as low decreases, and that's for the economy of operation. And the, the utility can't do that? Yes, the utility does that in a way, but uh, they, we can do it a little bit more efficiently than the utility can. You've had, the company has had at least 38,000 projects. Yes. And including the military? Military, and uh, I'd say probably only about 10 to 12 percent of our product is in the military right now. We only recently got into involved with the military. Prior to that, it was mostly commercial or commercial type business. 110 countries. Yes, around the world. The only continent that you've not penetrated is Australia. Correct. To my knowledge, we have nothing in Australia right now, regardless of what my son tells me. Because <laughs> he's never right. Yes, he is right. I have to admit, he is right. The only time he was wrong was when he thought he was. That that's, that's correct, that's and that was son. very rare. Very hey, by rare. the way, Larry does run the company for, as a CFO. Yes. It uh, got to the point where CEO, eventually right. I won't be around, and we need someone to pick up. He was willing to do it. It was a little difficult in the time in the beginning when he came aboard, maybe about 10, 12 years ago. He was more or less involved in the investment market, in the stock market entity, and I thought talked him into this thing. I, I tried to talk him into it. He talked himself into it. But he has a math and physics background. He has, he has an engineering background, a technical background. Yes, he does. Getting back to the company and its locations, you have a, at least one project in the Antarctic. Antarctic, Antarctic. We have several in Antarctica where those are, those are basically prime power for communication type equipment. That is where you create the power. Yes. You're the utility. We, we are, that's right. We you are, are the, the utility. utility. Correct. And then South America? South America, we have stuff in Argentina, Brazil, uh, Venezuela, Peru, Ecuador. Floating off the coast of Africa near Nigeria. Off the coast of Africa, in Nigeria? Yes. <laughs> 
The rig we have, we have several installations in Nigeria, but I think the rig that you're referring to is an oil platform that sits off the coast of Nigeria, and it's a power system that we put together with the generator, so it's about three megawatts, and it is on board a vessel that unloads the fuel. When they get the oil, they come up and they put it on the barge, and this unloads it into various vessels to sell it commercially. Now, the, the power source, uh, I am speaking of the engines, typically CAT? Most of them are CAT, yes. Locations. In what region? Your location, geographical locations. You have 200 employees, plus or minus, in East Peoria. We, in Peoria, our main location was in Peoria. We came for the economics of operation, where we needed to get someplace out of the Midwest because of transportation costs. That brought into Georgia. Georgia was initially started up in Barnesville, Georgia, which is about, oh, I'd say about an hour, an hour and a half away from Atlanta. And that was basically in the systems that were going in the Southwest. And then we recently opened up a place in Arizona to get to the West Coast business, yes. Singapore? Singapore was designed as an operation to do control systems. We, we had a, we, it's a subsidiary corporation called Enicon Systems International. The word systems had to be an, an, used, utilized to meet the Singaporean law over there, essentially. Bangladesh? Bangladesh is under control of Singapore, and we have about, I guess, maybe six or eight people in Bangladesh. And basically what they do is service and Engineering, huh? No manufacturing in Bangladesh. Plus or minus 300 employees. Yes. Plus or minus nearly 250,000 square feet. 80. Plus or minus. Yeah, yeah, I never thought of it that way. You're correct. You know more about the business than I do. Huh. Well, I... That's I, not fair. I, well, I actually own it. Did you know that? <laughs> yeah, you're working for me. Oh, well, I didn't realize that. <laughs> That's right. By the time we're finished, no. Getting back to these 38,000 projects, hospitals, prisons, wastewater, American Samoa, waste management, converting waste, if you will, to methane. Well, actually, what waste management does, is every dump that you go out on is a methane gas in the ground. So it captivates the methane gas. Rather than flare it off or sell it, it puts it into fuel, and it's fuel for the engine. So actually, it's free fuel for the engine. But essentially, it has a whole underground piping system that brings that, natural ga that methane gas as a fuel for the engine, yes. So it's an opportunity to convert what would otherwise be waste. It's green power. Green power, and that's the magic word today, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, Environment, quite green quite power. Yes. And so there are what, oh, 6,000 landfills in the continental U.S.? Probably, I don't know the number, but I think that sounds pretty close. And like yeah. two to 300 are actually using this conversion? Yes, yeah, so I so? think Europe, in, mm -hmm. in the common market, they use more landfill facilities than we do here in the States. Huh? And in South America, is starting to utilize that wasted gas rather than flare it off. It's utilized to produce power. And when, you, when you say flare off, I've seen those smokestacks. I say, and the fire on top. On top, They're yeah. dispersing the gas because... Whiting, Indiana, flared. for example, has all those, yeah. or the, all those flares. Right. Now, what I'm sensing is that, let's assume we have, uh, the population is not declining in the world. Yeah, it's no increasing. Sense. And people are consuming more. So there's more waste. And so in terms of a business plan, this idea of the methane conversion, that can be unlimited. Is that fair? It is very true. But from our end of it, we don't do the methane collection. Conversion. No, I understand. We take that, get that fuel and utilize it, right. Los Angeles Department of Water and Power, the nation's largest metro area, you folks are involved in the backup there. Is that right? That's correct. And the Federal Emergency Management Agency, likewise. Correct. I'm thinking of once upon a time, this old story, how did the company begin? Well, you were with Redco, is that correct? Correct. And why did you leave Redco? It, it, was, a, it was a corporation that was building but yet deteriorating, and I talked to the people at Redco, and I, there was no hidden secrets in it. I was at the stage where I said, i got to do something for ourselves that I can control. Not that I'm an egomaniac in that respect, but I wanted something different because I saw different advantages that were coming into play. And the forming of our company in 1975, we... we looked at the overseas market as where we would be 
biggest forte, biggest contributor we would do. And at that time, oil was premium. And where was oil coming from? The Middle East. So essentially, we concentrated in the Middle East. I think I traveled to the Middle East uh, at least 10 times a year to get our products put together. At that time, we were building only switch gear. We do, weren't this doing packaging. Right. No, Intercon. Intercon. Don't why we get back to the beginning. Okay. Though. I want to hear about the seventeen one thousand seven hundred dollar funding story. Okay. Essentially, what transpired was, we believe, I believed, and I talked to my wife Beatrice to the point that we needed the children to contribute what we we're doing. Here we were. No wait, there's five children. Five children. Here we came from New York. We were out here. We moved here in 73. Here we're 75. And the father was saying, we're going to start our own business. And we brought the children together and we explained what we were going to do. And we said, we need a contribution from you people to get food on the table. Now, wait a minute. What are the ages of the children? The oldest was probably 17, and the youngest was probably around seven or eight years old. And so you're telling them, look, folks, you're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna start a company. I'm gonna quit my job. Yes. I'm gonna quit my job, and you may, you may be on food stamps if we had them in '75. Correct. The, and so we've got to come up with $1,700. No, no, I, there was no figure set up. We need to come up with what you have achieved in your young life and we want you to contribute to this thing and that's what they did and so they, they had a choice they did they, buy they had a sh choice they had a uh, yes yeah, no six. no it was unanimous <laughs> from their point uh, every and, one and of wait them. a, a six-year-old had a choice <laughs> let me say a six-year-old was influenced by his older siblings huh? so if the siblings said yes the six-year-old was going to contribute as well so you had this family meeting and we're going to start this company right. I'm going to quit my job and you know we're going to start in Chillicothe in a boathouse right it was a boathouse in Chillicothe that's correct how many yeah. square feet probably I would say under under 15,000 square feet Versus somewhere around 250,000 square feet today. Yes, it, it, it's quite a difference. That's quite. Brooklyn, New York. Yes, this Independent where, Republic of Brooklyn. <laughs> this is where, where you began. Yes. And why engineering, undergraduate and a master's in mechanical engineering? Okay. <laughs> At Brooklyn, New York, why engineering? Well, I was influenced very much by my older cousin, who was an engineer, and I was toyed between an engineer and a lawyer. The other cousin was a lawyer, and I looked at both ways, and I said, well, engineering is more practical for me as far as step-by-step -step procedure on how I can build things and put things together. So my father influenced me to go to school engineering school. I applied at Cooper's Union. I wasn't good enough for Cooper's Union. So I accepted at Brooklyn Polytech in New York, and that's where I started, and that's where I went. And I kept, but I did it in mechanical engineering. What's amazing to me, personally, all my life, I've been doing more with electricity than I do with mechanical design. But you have no engineering degree in double E. No. Okay, so Beatrice and the five children will toss in the 1700 bucks. We'll cut your job. We'll go to this boathouse in Chillicothe, and we're going to have a business. Well, there's another story behind that. Go in ahead. order to get the more children involved in the thing, they <laughs> actually painted the inside of the boathouse physically on Saturdays and Sundays up there, making it look pretty. And you still work Saturdays? Yes. And you, the last clear chance before a quote goes out the door is reviewed by guests. Uh, no, it, that, that was true 10 years ago, but I came to the realization that people have to make their own decisions, and if I keep making the decisions for them, we get nowhere. So they make their own decisions, put it together. If something's wrong, I'm just hit them on the back of the head. But <laughs> other than that, no, the people are doing their own thing. But you don't right fire now. them if they're wrong. Absolutely not making a mistake. We want people to be boisterous in what they want to do and express their own opinion.